Hello, friends. It's December 30th, and as this month draws to a close, we have officially reached the end of one year and the beginning of another one. And what a year this has been. As usual, I'm coming to you via video to give you a short uh, State of the Church update. And uh, this time I've got three items to address with you. First, our plans for Sunday services in the immediate future. Second, a change in office staff. And third, a word about Bible reading. So first, our services. Uh, by God's grace, we've continued to be able to meet outside Sunday after Sunday since this pandemic began and we could have limited in-person gatherings. Uh, those of you who've gathered, who gathered outdoors this past Sunday, you noticed that there was a little bit of snow on the ground, and I'm sure that your fingers and toes uh, were probably as cold as mine by the time we sang the doxology together. But the sun was shining, and all things considered, it wasn't all that bad. Uh, our plan is to continue with outside services for the rest of the winter and into the spring as long as it's necessary. Uh, we do anticipate some very cold days are a possibility in January and February, uh, and the potential for rain and snow are always there. So we've decided to establish two thresholds to help us make decisions about meeting outdoors. 40 degrees and a 50% chance of rain. Uh, as, as long as as the forecast calls for the temperature to be above 40 degrees and with a less than 50% chance of rain, then we'll have our meeting outdoors. Uh, if it's going to be below 40 degrees or with a 50% or more chance of precipitation, then we're going to have our 11 a.m. service inside just like the 9 a.m. service. Uh, if the weather is looking iffy, we'll make that decision on Saturday or early Sunday morning and Unexpected circumstances might arise that change our plans, of course, but generally that will be the criteria that we're using, 40 degrees or a 50% chance of rain. Now, on Sundays that we don't meet outdoors and both services are indoors, we will, of course, ask you to wear a mask and observe social distancing and personal precautions in keeping with the state guidelines. I want to make it clear, though, the state guidelines do make exceptions for folks that have medical conditions that make mask wearing impossible. As we've had an outdoor service as an option, that hasn't been much of an issue because folks who are unable to wear masks could be part of the gathering outside. But in the case of cold weather or rainy Sundays, when we hold all meetings indoors, those of you that can't wear a mask are absolutely welcome and encouraged to come in and take part in the gathering inside. Uh, I just ask that you keep three things in mind. Number one, if you're unable to wear a mask and you do attend an indoor service, please make it the 11 o'clock service, if at all possible. Uh, that way we can still have the 9 a.m. service be an option for folks who are being very cautious and are trying hard to avoid all gatherings uh, where people aren't wearing masks. If you know that you can't wear a mask for a whole hour and the indoors is your only option that Sunday, plan to come to the 11 o'clock service. Second, if you do attend an indoor service, friends, and you notice that somebody there is not wearing a mask, please don't judge them or make them feel like they're doing something wrong. The state mandate clearly makes provision for folks who can't wear masks, so please be respectful of people that fall into that category. If you see your brother or sister without a mask at an indoor service, be charitable in your assumptions and be kind. Uh, and third, let me just remind all of you that as Christians, we are all subject to the ninth commandment, the commandment not to lie. And therefore, we have got to be honest and not be deceptive. Uh, this applies to this situation also. If you can wear a mask don't act like you can't just because you don't want to. That's being dishonest. We're all adults here. You all have access to the same order from the government. You can read, you can each of you read them and make your own decisions about whether or not the mask exemptions legitimately apply to you. We're not going to be checking up on anybody. If you can't wear one, don't wear one. If you can wear one, do, but don't lie. Uh, dishonesty and the worship of a holy God do not mix with one another. So, to summarize our plans for services, 
the 9 a.m. service will still be indoors and the 11 a.m. service will still be outdoors unless it's below 40 degrees or there's at least a 50% chance of rain. Then the 11 a.m. service will be moved inside. If both services are inside and you're unable to wear a mask inside, please plan to come to the 11 a.m. service. Now, I, I am sorry to have to dedicate so much time and so many words to such a thing as mask wearing, but we are trying to be as accommodating of everybody as we possibly can while still being subject to the authorities God's put over us, and that's just complicated right now. Uh, I thank you all for being understanding, and if you have any questions or you have special circumstances or you'd like some clarification or accommodation, please just let me know and we can try to work something out. We're not too large of a group that we can't be flexible with one another when it's needed. That's the first thing, the services. The second thing, office staff. Our sister Susan Hollins has retired from her duties here at the church office. We mentioned that in passing in the budget meeting last month, but I wanted to make sure that you all were aware of it. Uh, most of you know that Susan has served the members of this church and the office for many years, and she did so demonstrating grace and patience through all sorts of circumstances. She's been more than just a faithful laborer in our church office. She's been an example of godly character and a notable source of blessing to this congregation. Now, because of the pandemic, we're not able to throw her a, a proper retirement celebration where you can all express your gratitude to her personally for her service. Uh, but the elders have taken steps to honor Susan and be a blessing to her and Bob on your behalf as a church. Uh, we do encourage you, though, to reach out to Susan personally and express your thanks to her for her long and faithful work here at the church. She's been a true model of the Lord's teaching that in the kingdom, the greatest will not put themselves first, but will rather be a servant of all. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, for serving us so well. That's the second thing, office staff. And now third, finally, uh, as we come to the last hours of 2020 here and we're considering our plans for next year, I want to encourage you, friends, each of you, to think about your plans for Bible reading next year. I won't, I'm not going to make a case in detail here for the sake of time, but I am going to assume that you all, as Christians, recognize the vital importance of regular, comprehensive, repetitive Bible reading. Our God has spoken to us in his word, and if we are to trust in him and obey him, we absolutely must be listening to him, reading the Bible. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times you've read it, as, as Charles Spurgeon put it, nobody ever outgrows scripture. The book widens and deepens with our years. No matter how long you've been a Christian, you're simply not going to be growing in faith and holiness if you aren't regularly, consistently reading through the Bible. And I mean the whole Bible, not just a few favorite passages. As, as A.W. Tozer said, nothing less than a whole Bible can make a whole Christian. Now, the Bible is not a huge book. Now, most copies have around a, a thousand pages. It takes about 75 hours to read the whole thing at a relatively slow, out loud pace. And that's not very long, really. In comparison to the, the hours of Netflix and Facebook and podcasts that we listen to, it really isn't that much. If you break it down over the 365 days in a year, it's only like 12 minutes a day. Uh, friends, you, you, you probably spend more than 12 minutes a day texting. Is the word of the living God important enough to you to dedicate 12 minutes a day to reading it? It should be. It really should be. Uh, the Bible is a big enough book, though, that if you're going to read through the whole thing, you're going to need a plan to do so. Uh, you can just start at the beginning and plan to read three or four chapters a day, and you'll be done in a year. Now, that's the simplest way to do it, uh, but there are plenty of other ways to do it. Uh, plans that balance the Old Testament and the New Testament in reading, plans that go through the whole thing chronologically, plans that, that balance readings in different genres or that have built-in makeup days so you can catch up if you fall behind. Um, I've included a link in the, the email and in the, the notes for this video to a Ligonier article that lists a lot of different Bible reading plans. 
And I encourage you to take a look at that uh, and see if there's a plan there that appeals to you. Uh, whatever you choose to do, though, please choose to read the Bible this year. Uh, we, we need it, friends. I need it. I usually follow the McShane Bible reading plan, which takes you through the Old Testament once and the New Testament and Psalms twice in a year. This year I've decided, though, I'm just going to start at the beginning and go straight through and see how long it takes me to get through the Bible. Uh, I, I think this is a year for God's people to turn our attention back to the Bible in a pretty dramatic way. Uh, we, we've got to, this is the right time for us to return to the book and give God's word our attention and to soak it up and to have our minds be renewed by it, have our thinking be shaped and molded by the truth that's revealed there. So friends, decide that you're going to read the Bible this year. And then before Friday, January 1st, figure out how you're going to go about reading it. Now, as always, I'm grateful for you all. I'm thankful to be serving as your pastor right now. Uh, please pray for me and for the other elders, and please pray for one another. The steadfast love of the Lord endures forever.